Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's date is December 6th, 2019. My name is Lynn Marquardt, and I'm your host. And welcome. I'm sorry I wasn't here last week, so I have a lot to catch you up on in the last two weeks. I hope you've had a great Thanksgiving and are looking forward to a nice Christmas and holiday, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate in this month of December, whether it's cold up here in the Northern Hemisphere or you're heading into hot, hot summer down in Australia, welcome. Let's do something in the next 60 minutes and see what we can accomplish. It's usually more than we expect. So today I have literally a list of things that I wanna cover. First of which is to talk about my project. Well, let me, let me back up. I have nine quilts to finish between now and Christmas at one stage or another. I did, and I'm going to share with you a couple of them. I did just finish one. And tonight we have to make real progress on a Christmas cat quilt for Molly. Molly is the friend that we met. She's a friend of Alexa's, my niece, met her down in Jamaica. And she's the one who lost her home to a fire. And she loved quilts and cats, loves quilts and cats. She lost all of her quilts, so my sister and I, KB, are making her a, a quilt. Of course, it is December 6th, and the plan is we're going to drive out to Pennsylvania on December 20th. I think that's right. That's a Friday. And this is what we have. We have lots of fabric in the requisite green and red colors. I sent away to fabric.com for this really cool backing fabric that has cats. And we have a, some ideas for making a tree-based quilt. So we'll get started on that in a minute. A couple of other things I wanted to show you before I clean the slate here. And again, thank you for joining me. If you want to share what you're working on, please say hello on YouTube or send a picture to lynn at simplycolorful.com. I'd love to share it. It's very informal. Oh, and you can always go to Facebook to the Simply Colorful page or Simply Colorful Mystery Quilt Along and post there. Okay, one of the nine quilts that I am working on is giving new life to a vintage quilt. This was made 30 years ago for a woman for her wedding. Maybe I showed it to you last time. The back has been taken off. The old batting has been taken off. It's ready to now be put with this back. It's going to be 106 by 110 inches. So, of course, the backing has to be pieced with two big long strips and then some center pieces. So that's one thing that's in the works. Um, this one, I think I shared a picture on Facebook a few days ago. This was made for Beth and Amy's father out of fabrics from their mother's clothing. And their mother's name is Sarah Rose. And so we did the backing in this nice rose fabric. So with the black background, which is working so well on the black dog quilt that Holly, you've been watching Holly work on. So that's that. So let's put those away. We don't have to think about them right now. In order to get nine quilts done between now and Christmas, we have to do a lot of compartmentalization, I think, which we can do. Okay, so. Um, I got out my Panasonic iron again, because we're gonna be piecing. <coughs> excuse me. I did pick up, <coughs> excuse me. That was one of the reasons I wasn't on last week was the day after Thanksgiving, I got pink eye and I was continuing to get over a cold. So it's always something. And the cold seems to find me year after year. So I hope none of you have gotten a cold or if you have, I hope you're drinking lots of fluid and that it is not not making you too too, ups, not making you too 
uncomfortable. Let me mute that. See this? I'm moving up in the world. I'm able to see. Hey, hello, crusty old man beard. <laughs> Do you have a cold? I'm getting over one. Yep. I'm working on comfort quilts. Oh, I think we just blew a fuse. Huh. One of my lights went out. But luckily, I think we're still on, so we're just going to keep going. Okay, I'm working on comfort quilts for seniors. Oh, very nice. They are lap quilts for those in wheelchairs and go to a local senior care facility. That's great. That's, that's perfect. Carol says, hi, Lynn. Sounds like you have a cold. Did I miss you last Friday? I'm getting over a cold. I sound worse than I feel. I feel okay. And no, you didn't miss me last week because I didn't do it. I was not feeling well, and it was the day after Thanksgiving, and I just, if if you could see the bomb that went off in this room, it was crazy. So I'm sorry I missed you last week. Dawn, hi, Dawn. She loves the cat fabric. I thought you might. Dawn is finishing knitting a hat tonight. Hope you finish all those projects and hope you feel better. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Speaking of which, Dawn, Tomorrow, we'll be up at the Holiday Stroll in the center of town in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. And we're going to be selling raffles to the Marathon Quilters Raffle Quilt to support a um, text uh, student going on to study textile arts. I think we mentioned this before up at the in Hopkinton or any surrounding towns and also to support some of our creative programs. So we'll be selling raffle tickets there. And depending on how I feel, what I might do is set up the quilt give everyone the raffle tickets and the all, everything, the sign and have Nancy and team sell them tomorrow. And then I'll go pick it up at the end of the day. And then Michelle is going to take, I'm going to drop it off at her house and she's going to actually go raffle it off over in Westboro. I forget where, but she'll be there for a few days next week. So it's making the rounds. It's going to go down to Ryko and be hanging up in the rafters there. So thanks for all your help on that, Don. Um, Yes, thank you everyone for wishing me better health. I'm I'm getting there. I just I wish everyone good health. Okay. So holiday stroll, okay, nine quilts. Okay. I think the these other I have a couple of Christmas books. I have something that I'm interested in doing that's way out of the realm of quilting. And I want to talk to you about feet, but before that, let's get sewing so we can at least at the end of this hour say we accomplished something. How's that sound? So again, this is the backing. <laughs> let's work. So this is how I make my quilts. I am not, as you know, a very methodical quilter given all that I have to do lately, which is sometimes too bad. I miss the whole process of really planning out a quilt and spending time thinking about the action, you know, planning it in the EQ and um, having in mind exactly where I want it to go or, <coughs> excuse me. So for this quilt, what I'm doing is I'm gonna work backwards and I'm going to measure this cat fabric that I bought. It's either four or five yards. Looks like five yards. So I'm gonna assume that I'm only gonna use four yards and I'm gonna sew it in half. So it will be 72 inches by let's say 42 plus 42 is 84 inches. So that's what I'm going to strive for. And I'm going to leave a yard here because I'd like to make a pillowcase. I think that would be cute to go with, with this quilt. But but Or also we could use some of it in the front. So then we have a Christmas tree prototype. Hmm. When I'm looking at it there, it looks kind of funny. But I'd like to make a Christmas tree. And this is 
what what I'm thinking is use this as the background. So this is the green with the red dots that I think I've shown everyone before. And then use these random colors to make my tree. So the question is, if I want to end up with an 84 by 72 inch quilt, how many trees do I want to make? And then what size do I need to make the strips? Well, <coughs> that looks about twice as big as twice as long as it is high. And there's sashing in between. So let's say we did six, no, three by three with sashing. Two, three. I'm going to make the trees really big given the amount of time we don't have. And I know you can't see this, but I have to do this slight thinking just for a second. And I'm talking out loud to give you a feel for how I do it. I'm sure there... As, there are as many ways of quilting as there are people in the world, but this is how I'm doing this one. So if each of them is 20, 40, 60, no, I'm going to have to do, well, not necessarily. I can have a lot of this in the background. I'm just going to do nine or maybe eight and make that ninth one be a cat which I think was my sister's suggestion, which I thought was really a lovely idea. So let's say we want to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these, and they're going to make them float in this. I could literally make each strip 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 40, 60, yeah, I could do that. I'm going to make each strip five inches wide. Let's try one, okay? Okay. So. Oh, and we could use the cat fabric for the stump of the tree, maybe. <coughs> Although it's not solid enough. Although I could, maybe I could fussy cut something out of it. Okay. So. Mm. So tell me what you've been working on. Oh, good. I see lots of people out there. Yay. Good, good, good. Share what you're doing for your holidays. I hope everyone enjoyed their Thanksgiving. We had, isn't that funny that we blew a fuse? We had 20, I think 22 people. My mother, if she's out there, thank you, mom, was my savior. Bob's and my savior because I was not feeling well. And I've been doing this this part-time job moving packages. So it is, it means when I get home, I don't do much. So my mother, she cleaned, she set the table, she made the the flower centerpieces. She made at least two pies. She made the squash, Hubbard squash, started, you know, baked it and then peeled it out and then made it yummy. It was so good and sweet. Creamed onions. Let's see, what am I forgetting, mom? Just amazing. And Bob did an amazing amount of work too. And I just, I, Luckily, I rallied for the actual event, <laughs> which is kind of great. How lucky am I? I didn't do any of the work, but then when it came to party, I was 
it was nice to see people. Ooh, that needs to be ironed. And um, and then we ate turkey for a few days. And I got sick of turkey fast this year. But boy, that the day of, I do, I love all the goes with turkey, the stuffing and the cranberry sauce. Oh, and my cousin Heidi, Holly's mother. Holly is, oh, this went off. My iron was on the fuse that blew. Hmm. I guess that's not altogether surprising, right? Draws a lot. Oh, and the fuse box is in the basement. Ay, ay, ay. That's okay. We still will be able to make a prototype. Okay, so these are my background colors. At least for the tree part. You all are so good to put up with me. Oh, look at this. I can't even iron it. <clears throat> so, Sue Norton, if you're out there, you must be counting down the days. It's very exciting. To retirement, that is. I'm getting more comfortable using the word retirement because it can mean all different things. not I'm just not doing the corporate gig right okay and that's okay because even though I'm working quite hard these days and I want to tell you about what happened I can leave it at the end of the day and come do what I want to do this one's already cut to five so here in the Americas, as I think around the world increasingly, there's such a thing as Cyber Monday. So it used to be Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. All of the retail, brick and mortar retail stores would have great sales, right? And people would get up early, they'd camp outside to get a $200 TV from Walmart or whatever. And I'm not poo pooing it, it's a great thing. Um, for me, back in the day when I needed a TV, now I'm at the point where I want to get rid of things. In fact, I said to my husband, I said to Bob, when he asked me what I wanted for Christmas, I point blank said, I don't want any more stuff, including <laughs> pans. I don't need any more cooking pans. <laughs> he loves to get pans, which I hope I didn't thwart <clears throat> the opportunity to get anything. I literally said to him, why don't you save up your money for five years and then upgrade my ring? I thought he was going to fall off his chair. He will never do that. If I ever want a different ring, I will have to get it myself. Which don't put that path, which could happen. <coughs> but probably not. Not anymore. Ooh, that's kind of a dark, a dark green, but that's okay. I like it. Maybe I'll spice it up with this fern one. Hmm. That's very dark. I'm going to take that out, actually. Maybe that can be the um, tree trunks. Well, that might be kind of neat. That could be the tree trunks for the red trees. And then maybe that could be the tree trunks for the green trees or something like that. No, I don't, I think that'll be too stark. I think we want a unifying, actually, I'm talking out loud here. I think we want a unifying fabric for the tree trunk. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Mm. I always get sick in the winter. What's up with that? <coughs> okay. Cleaning that one up. Okay, so what else do I want to talk about? I wanted to talk about... Oh, let me tell you about moving packages. That's what I was starting to say. Okay, so brick and man, my mind was wandering. So Black Friday, years ago, brick and mortar retailers would offer great sales and they'd open the stores the day after Thanksgiving you could go. And that was really a family affair. It could be lots of fun and you go shop good deals. Well, now that the internet's available, turned out that we humans, in addition to Black Friday, the following Monday after Thanksgiving, ironically, when everyone is back to work, we have become online shopping shoppers although i think it really has extended both the weekend before cyber monday and and all this week but anyway they call the monday after thanksgiving cyber monday <coughs> and apparently people shopped which is great that's all good fine and good it also snowed here in new england and so all these packages that were ordered ended up getting stuck. And so the process has been unstucking itself all week long. And I'm still not convinced that all of the packages that ultimately didn't get delivered on Monday and Tuesday are back in the system and that we're back on track. <coughs> so, on Monday, I get into the, the factory, and how am I going to do this? <sighs> I need my iron. And if I am... Putting this like this, I need a ruler that can cut a 45 degree angle, and then I need to be able to tell the sizes for each of these, don't I? Well, first off, what order do we like? And are we doing four or five? Four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Do I need to do the Pythagorean theorem for this top one? This top one ends up being a triangle. And is it a right? Huh, what else was I going to talk about tonight? This might be, on, be beyond me for tonight, but maybe, you know what I'm going to do? Humor me. I'm going to cut out strips. That way, when I get my iron back and tomorrow and I can walk around the studio, I'll make us a prototype. So, let me see who's out there and catch up. Make sure to say hi to everyone. My Stitchy Home. Lynn, can you raise the camera so the keyboard does not show? We could see you better, I think. Oh, Becca, I'm sorry. Yes, I can. Thank you for telling me that. Hmm. Woo.
I don't know why that does that. Okay, let's try that. we go. Thank you, Becca. You can see the long arm in the back there. <sighs> okay, who else is out there? Oh, KB says, hi, I love the cats. Are they for Molly? Yes, they are. Huh, yuck math. No kidding. Hey, Allie. Allie says she's arrived late to the party. I've got a new summer cold, but we're, oh, I'm so sorry. Man, but working frolic mystery after two-year-old granddaughter Mackenzie goes home. Hot day here. Ooh, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 39 degrees centigrade Celsius. And she says, I still love retirement. Amen, Allie. And you're doing it right. Yeah, me too. Look at this funny fabric. I wonder what we cut out of it. <coughs> Boy, I remember when Mackenzie was born. Time does fly, doesn't it? Oh, so tis the season. Holly, jolly, molly, holly, molly, jolly. Next Friday night, next Friday afternoon, actually, Holly is coming back and she's going to work with me. We're going to work together and we're going to finish this top. And this is one of the nine tops <coughs> that I mentioned. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. So she will be on the show next Friday night. And that will be really fun. And it'll be really fun to finish this quilt. I think it has great promise. <coughs> we go. I'm so sorry about the keyboard. Ugh. Becca, at my stitchy home, how's your podcast doing or your, your YouTube channel? Everyone should check her out. Becca Cat Clash, my stitchy home. This has a little blue in it. It's a pretty batik. Very dark. <coughs> okay. Okay, so I was going to talk about foot reflexology. Highly recommend it. If you happen to have <coughs> someone in your area that does foot reflexology, check them out. They can help. It helps with circulation. It helps with pain. It is relaxing. It helps with stress, relieve stress. This one really needs ironing. So we'll wait on that one did this one maybe i'll do a few more of these i like this one this one is called willow wood by gene wells for p and b textiles it's kind of cool so foot reflexology i did that tonight and it was great. And what else is on my list? <coughs> oh. So I went to the library also today before 
my appointment because I wanted some Christmas inspiration for this and for other things, right? And I got two books out. And of, of course, I can't show you everything that's in the books, but I, this one was Christmas at Buttermilk Basin. And for anyone who might be doing wool applique, I know Deb was doing some of that, and it, several of you have done it over the years. And they had some cute little motifs, like this is the, the Volkswagen bug with a tree on top and presents. And they have some nice diagrams in the back that you can use. The author is Stacy West. She's an artist who grew up in rural Minnesota, surrounded by three generations of creative women. She learned to sew at an early age and studied graphic design in college. Ah. So it's a Martingale book, and it's really kind of cute. Like you can make, it has some ornaments that are designed. Easy entry to do it. So anyway, that was fun. I got that. 19 patterns for mini quilts and more. And then this one, Forever Christmas. Has anyone read this yet or seen it? It's about Tasha Tudor, who was an illustrator and a book writer. This book is about her, and it was written by Harry Davis. Photographs are by Jay Paul. And Tasha, she was an illustrator for The Night Before Christmas, Clement Moore's. I think that's his name. That's who wrote it, right? Hang on. <coughs> um. Oh, now I'm skipping ahead because I just want to make sure I know the author of A Night Before Christmas. <sighs> anyway, Tasha Tudor was very creative. She has passed away recently. She wrote Becky's Christmas, Snow Before Christmas, and she had a lot of traditions that she did every year, like cutting down the tree, setting up a crash in the woods, roasting a turkey. Okay, Clement Seymour, the C was what I was missing. So she, <coughs> she illustrated that for him three times. The first time, and they changed over time, apparently. So the original, The Night Before Christmas, was written in 1822. It was composed originally by Clement for his own children's entertainment. And the poem did not appear in book form until 1848. It's the account of a magical visit from St. Nicholas, transforming him from a religious figure to the secular Santa Claus we know today. And he made him more universal, accessible. He now represented the spirit of giving at Christmas and every household was included. Over the next century, so from 1848 to 1948 and beyond, so century and a half now, hundreds of artists illustrated Moore's poem, each interpreting Santa more in the fashion of their time than in the spirit of its creator. That's interesting. Tasha followed the same path, but having illustrated this Christmas classic, classic three times, her depiction of Santa Claus has evolved with each new edition. The first, done more than 30 years ago, is a small leather-bound volume that has gone on to become quite a collector's item. Though Santa is still presented relatively close to the usual concept, in this first depiction, Tasha begins to make Santa her own creation. More than a decade later, Tasha once again illustrated the book, the poem, and the result is quite different. The Santa is decidedly more elfin, and he arrives with more than just enough magic to come down the chimney. Mice are holding matches aloft like torches, and they guide him to the rooftop. An owl serves as navigator. And amid a profusion of toys brought to life, Santa dances with one of Tasha's corgi, while Puss plays the fiddle. The corgi tries Santa's pipe and a doll and a jester dance, as does a catnip mouse. Huh, that's wonderful. Her, her illustrations are just so Rockwellian. They're just, um, they're fantasy. 
Um, this image from the night before Christmas shows a young mother wearing Tasha's own homespun apron and knitted shawl, reading from one of Tasha's versions of the night before Christmas to a rapt audience. Tasha's legendary borders are well represented here by a delightful array of toys, gifts, and holiday treats. So you may have at some point seen some advent calendars that have that Tasha had done. She did many advent calendars and this border is what they're talking about. There are lots of toys in it and very pretty. So this book is fun. It's called Forever Christmas. And let's, I'll just read a little bit more. Forever Christmas is a celebration of a joyous holiday and of one inspired artist's preparation for and exalta exaltation of the day. That artist is Tasha Tudor. So readers know in advance how unique the Advent and Christmas activities will be. So Harry Davis, who wrote this, who tells of the Christmas season of Tasha Tudor's house, has been a guest there many times, and his descriptions bring the season to life. He begins his narrative as Tasha makes the Advent wreath. He goes on to describe the pre-Christmas making of gifts and special tree decorations. Oh, she made all our gifts, by the way. As the festive day approaches, the tree is selected. A very special evening soon follows when friends and family go through the woods to discover and illuminate the creche. Then when Christmas arrives, the tree is trimmed and dinner is prepared and served. The tree, decked with ornaments of the past and the present, is lit with real candles. Christmas has arrived and it is honored with gusto and sentiment. Even after the celebration is over, another treat is in store and that's a wintry sleigh ride. Gorgeously illustrated with photos. So she has a sleigh ride. And there's, I'll show you. Here's a cool picture. Here she is, presumably, in her window. And she, that's a self-portrait, I think. Okay, so those were the two books I got. I highly, I strongly encourage you to go to your library or even online and get a couple of holiday books just for fun. Okay. <coughs> oh. Xbox. Xbox marks the spot. So, and I know I'm not doing much sewing tonight. The other thing I wanted to tell you is Bob has been working in our front bedroom and he tore up the carpeting and then he had to tear up the subfloor because of what the dog had done in that room. It's disgusting. It was disgusting. It ruined some nice plywood, but he's pulled that all up and it's giving him the opportunity to put some insulation into between the first and second floor, which I always said when we built this house, I said to him, I want insulation in the walls and floors and ceilings so that sound doesn't carry. And that was the one thing we didn't do. Well, <laughs> that was one of the things we didn't do was we couldn't afford to put insulation in between the floor and the ceiling downstairs. So you hear a lot of noise. So anyway, that might be fixed in this one room, but the point is he was he took everything out. So mom and Karen, if you ever come to visit, when you come to visit, or anyone else, Pat and Sue and Sarah, <coughs> excuse me, there are no beds in the spare bedroom. He's taken everything out, including a chest that had my Xbox. And I wanted to show this to everyone. And it makes me really excited. I got this Xbox. Actually, it's I don't even know if it's the same thing. It's a Nintendo GameCube. So maybe it's not an Xbox. Nintendo GameCube. I got it after visiting my nephew, Tommy. And he taught me how to play a few games. And I wanted to learn so that when I went to see him, I would know how to play games. So I have SS Tricky. These are snowboarders. Here's my box. And of course, so I've got... I'm moving packages 35 hours a week. I've got nine quilts to make between now and Christmas. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, and, and presents for everyone else. I have no idea. It's going to be a very sparse Christmas. And all I want to do is learn how to play my GameCube. <laughs> Look at this controller. That's like a retro controller, I think. I want to do it in the worst way. And why, why on earth would I have two SS Tricky games? They're the only games I have. 
I wonder if one is Tommy's. Oh, here we go, though. Oh, we have two others. Ha! I got into SS. So they're used. That's a good thing. SSX3. So I must have thought I was a hot shot with SS Tricky, so I got myself the advanced. And then Mario Kart. That's the one I should do. I want to plug that in and remember, relearn it. So, Mom, maybe, maybe we can learn this at Christmas. I don't know. So, I would share that. <coughs> I think, I think because I blew a fuse and I can't iron, I think I might. Oh, let me cut out a few red ones. Like that. It's almost orangey. Man, do I want to do that mystery quilt. The frolic mystery quilt. That's another thing, but I, really, that would be ridiculous if I was doing that too, wouldn't it? If I do say so myself. Oh, and Diane, Diane Wilson. It was so nice to see your comments. I love that you're that everyone is out there. If you didn't get your twenty dollar off coupon for machine quilting. For anyone who's a patron, <laughs> they went out a few weeks ago. <coughs> Please let me know. And it, for anyone who might want a $20 off coupon, become a patron for just a few dollars a month, and I'll send it right out to you. $20 is $20. This is an old one. Cranston fabrics, Ugh, but it needs ironing. Okay, here's a good one. Lots of sizing in this one. more red. I like that red. I'll cut another one. There will be lots of repeats in this, but that's okay. That's a pretty one with the reeds. I don't think it's quite big enough. Oh, in other news, I got my flu shot this week. A little late, but. It was really convenient. I was at the doctor for something else. My, you know, my HMO, my primary care, or whatever that is. And, <coughs> excuse me, the nurse practitioner said, have you had your flu shot yet? And I replied, no, I have not. Well, we can give you one for free right now. And that worked. Of course, I have a confession to make. I do not like needles. That's not the confession. That's, I'm, I think everyone knows that by now. I don't like needles. And then after I said yes, I thought to myself, ooh, how often do they give shots here? Literally, this is what went through my mind. Ooh, did I just make a tragic, a, a bad mistake? Are these people going to know how to give me a shot? How often do they do that? Are they practiced? And I thought to myself, maybe I should go to a flu clinic where they do it over and over and over again because I bet they'll do a better job. That went through my mind. Here I am at the doctor's office. Terrible. <coughs>
And yes, the nurse seemed like she was about 12, just for the record. So the nurse practitioner or whomever offered me the shot. I said, yes. She left, put it in my record, and in came the 12-year-old nurse. <laughs> but she did a fine job. <laughs> a terrible. I just heard something. Am I missing you guys? Let's see. Oh, better. Thank you. I'm still waiting on my quilt backs to get their embroidered labels done. Box is ready to ship to you whenever I get them back. No hurry. They are not Christmas gifts. Oh, phew, Becky. Thank you for letting me know, and I will be on the lookout. I'm excited to see them, and I'm excited to do them. Thank you for the opportunity. That's great. Uh, can't wait for next Friday. You gals are great together. Thank you. She she is she's witty, and she's fun, huh? Oh, no, Stitchy Home. It has been over a month since my last videos. I had trips and stuff. Such stuff is piling up on my dining table to show in my next video. I need to get one done. That is for sure. Thanks for asking. Oh, I didn't mean to put any pressure on you. When you do it, you do it. Oh, neat. Margaret. Hi, Lynn from Australia. Merry Christmas to you and your family and right back at you. Hello. Happy Saturday morning. Oh, and Margaret says, I love the dog Christmas quilt on your design wall. Aw, thank you. Those are, Margaret, I'm not sure you caught, the, the dogs came from t-shirts from the Black Dog Bakery. And they they do a Christmas t-shirt every year. And my niece had lots of them and she cut them up. Allie says, I don't like needles either and I've never had a flu shot. See? I'm not alone in not liking them. And so... The $100,000 question is, Allie, have you ever had the flu? Now, I've had flu shots consistently for many years now. Last year, I had the flu, even though I had the flu shot. It was not pretty. Huh. So who's to, who's to know? This is a pretty classic red. VIP Cranston Print Works. Hmm. I like it. <coughs> oh, I know. I wanted to check my mail. Just make sure I haven't missed any hellos. Because Carol Bell, maybe Carol's out. I knew you were out there, Carol Bell. Hi, Carol. Carol says, I'm not sewing tonight. Hi, Linden Fibercasters. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. She says, I'm not sewing tonight as I have been out on work's Christmas do and sew. I'm clipping apart some four patches and spinning the seams. Oh, I love it. Oh, what a great picture. No matter how many times I see that, I love that. It looks like you're doing frolic. Thanks for sending that, Carol. Wow. Gee. Here's something bad. Someone out in the Midwest has my... <coughs> Someone thinks my email is hers. So, and she does a lot of Christmas buying apparently online. And so I get all of her receipts these days. She's done a lot of Kohl's. But no, Cole sent me the same thing over and over and over again. Cole's cash value. Holy cow. I have probably. Well, I'll count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Huh. Bizarre. 
I mean, her shipment is headed my way. It's not really here on the email that I've received, which she's not getting, presumably. It's giving me her address. I've tried to call her. No reply or I got a wrong number at this number. Um, I guess maybe I'll call Coles next. But she bought a beautiful Swarovski birthstone stackable wave ring. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Never a dull moment. Well, I haven't mentioned Chris or Jean's name all night. Jean, hello. Thank you again for the referrals. Thank you again for the guidance. Um, can't think of anything else to thank Jean for. Chris, Christine, funny thing happened last night. So if you're out there, I'm sorry if if I scared you, but just last night, a funny thing happened. I was apparently sound asleep in my recliner downstairs and we got a knock on the door. And before I could even be awake, I thought that it was someone who had either broken down outside or a neighbor in distress because I thought it was so late and our light, our front door light had been turned off. So apparently before I even was half awake, I bolted out of my recliner. I ran to the door. I opened it up to see if I could help. And there was Chris, Christine with a gift of fabric and some yarn. She was coming back from yoga and she wanted to drop it off. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <coughs> Who just wrote? Oh, a customer asking me to do a goodbye quilt by December 15th. Absolutely, I can do that. So remember, I kicked off this, this by saying I had nine quilts to finish up by Christmas. I have 10, and that's it. The door shut. <laughs> but I'm thrilled to have the opportunity, and I'm thrilled that you're all out there. Let's go. Oh, oh, one last thing I wanted to share. Kelly Clarkson. I know it's kind of hokey, but I really enjoy watching her. And she has a great saying at the end of every show. And, you know, I told myself I needed to write it down, so I got it right. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can look it up right now so that I don't goof it up. Kelly Clarkson's Her Daily Show. It's just so feel good, Kelly Clark Sun um, Sign Off TV Show. It's something like make it a great day, and if it's not, change it. So I like that. It empowers each of us to make our own enjoyment out of life. So that's – anyway, watch Kelly Clarkson. She's really great. i am become a fan. I'm a fangirl. Okay, but clearly I'm not doing much sewing tonight, and I want to thank everyone for being there. I want to wish Sue a happy retirement. Go learn how to draw. Do all those other quilts. Forget your dear Jane. I have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> and for everyone else out there, enjoy your week. Do something you love. And I'll see you right back here next Friday with Holly, where we're going to finish our dog quilt. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining me.